Cause and effect. It can look like it's pretty straightforward, and sometimes it actually is. But at other times, it's not as clear. For example, does having more fast food restaurants in a neighborhood cause obesity? Does doing homework cause more learning? And does a happy workforce make a company more profitable? Research demonstrates that there are positive correlations between the variables in each of these examples. But correlation is not causation. Public policy researcher Greg Van Risen says that because public policy decisions often involve spending millions of tax dollars, there can be substantial risk in jumping to conclusions about cause and effect. Advocates of one side or another on, a, on an issue can, can use uh, or overinterpret um, uh, correlations as, as evidence of causation. One reason to jump, people jump to that conclusion is because I think in some ways inherently we think in terms of cause and effect quite easily. Van Risen and fellow public policy researcher Dahlia Remler will use an everyday example about exercise and mood to illustrate why cause and effect can actually be quite difficult to establish. How can we determine whether exercise and mood are causally related and if they are, are the effects as large as we might think? So we all want to know what works, and not just if it works, but how well it works. How, how big is the impact? So everyone, we're all out there and we're trying to find evidence. And it turns out that evidence is hard to get. We decided to ask some people who exercise regularly what they think about this relationship. First, does exercise affect your mood? Yeah, absolutely. It makes you feel 100% better. Absolutely. When after I finish, I take a shower, I feel like a new person. Exercise and mood are positively correlated. People jump from learning that exercise and mood are positively correlated to assuming that there's a causal relationship. Do you think exercise actually causes a better mood? Yes, I do. I think it releases endorphins and that gives me more energy and then I feel better about myself and better about my day. Okay, maybe exercise is lifting mood. Maybe some of that correlation, though, could that be due to mood-driving exercise? I'd say mood, for me, personally, has the most influential effect on whether I want to exercise. My stress level and whether I'm happy or sad is the most for me. So the arrow doesn't go that way, the arrow goes this way. That's known as reverse causation. And from a public policy standpoint, if mood is more likely to influence exercise levels, than exercise is to cause mood improvement, then expensive efforts designed to increase exercise levels in the hope of elevating mood would be unjustified. So you had someone, they were depressed, they weren't exercising, and they were persuaded, hey, go out and exercise, the exercise would increase. No arrows going from exercise to mood, nothing, they would just be depressed, now they'd be exercising. And there's more. The weather is yet another variable, and it can affect both mood and exercise. If it's a beautiful day like today, it's really easy, you want to be out walking, want to get out there and exercise. You don't feel as motivated when the weather gets crappy. When the weather is good, people are in a good mood, and when the weather is good, people exercise more. Researchers call the weather a common cause, since it can affect both exercise and mood. So which one of these three variables do exercisers believe has the most pronounced overall effect? Exercise on mood, I think, has the strongest effect. I think the weather influences my mood the most, which then influences my motivation to exercise. I tend to think that exercise affects mood more than mood affects exercise, although listening to what I'm saying right now, <laughs> I'm not so sure. And of course, that's the point. It's really very complicated to figure this out. And so one of the big messages is to be skeptical and to really think about all the different possible alternative explanations. Because when you do that, then you can look for ways of finding evidence of, of how to measure the real effect. 
So if we are interested in determining if there actually is a causal link between exercise and mood and the size of such an effect, we have to go beyond just observing or asking people about this connection. So researchers try to intervene in a way that systematically changes exercise in order to see how the change affects mood. You want to give an exogenous push to exercise. Exogenous meaning coming from the outside, coming from um, sort of beyond the control of the, the individual. So if you can basically make it much more convenient for people to exercise and persuade them to exercise. So you put gyms in places, you give them time to exercise, you make it very convenient, and you sort of basically increase exercise from the outside. This medical insurance website provides an exogenous push. It offers policyholders monetary rewards for active, healthy lifestyles. And with an exogenous push, you follow through and however much that change in exercise affects mood, that is the effect of exercise on mood. So this exogenous push is what can tell you how much, if and if and how much exercise can change mood. The bottom line is that we need to be critical and skeptical observers. The correlation between exercise and mood is strong. But assuming that this correlation is explained only by the impact of the exercise on mood would be a statistically biased estimate of the effect of exercise on mood, since both weather and mood may also contribute to exercise levels. It's very important to understand the issue of bias because we draw conclusions based on statistics like that. So the reality might be that only a part of that is, is due to what we assume to be the cause and the rest of it is due to other factors um, which we haven't accounted for.